Hey everyone, it's Kellen from RacerX again with another race examination video from Salt Lake City 2. We're going to talk about the 450 main event start right off the bat here. In the heat race, Ken Roxon lined up outside of Eli Tomac and was able to sweep into the first corner and grab the whole shot. He would go on to win that heat race in pretty convincing fashion. But in the main event, Roxon was not the first gate pick. It actually went to Malcolm Stewart who won his heat race, so Roxon lined up second. Uh, Cooper Webb had third gate pick, Eli Tomek had fourth gate pick, and then a bunch of people lined up outside of Malcolm Stewart before Justin Brayton with the ninth gate pick selected right next to Tomek, probably to be a bit of a buffer between himself and Ken Roxon. Now the reason Roxon selected this far inside gate is actually because in the heat races, this gate is not used at all. There's actually a tough block that sits on this gate. It actually is that way all day long too because there's not 22 riders on the gate for the heat races or practice starts, so they condense them to the middle 20 gates. So only in the LCQs and the 250 main event has this gate been used at all, which leaves this rut here, or this little slot of dirt coming out of the gate, very unused and a really good slot for him to get a good jump off the gate, which he tried to use. He actually did out jump his teammate Brayton, but as you can see, anybody to his left can easily close him off, which is exactly what Cooper Webb with a better start did. And not only did Webb close Roxon off, he decided to close Tomac off too. And that contributed to both of them getting very, very bad starts and Webb getting a much better start and able to charge forward in the early runnings of this race. The reason I wanted to highlight this though is because there is so much more strategy to a good start than just gate pick or a good jump. And you can see all three guys with the inside gate pick ended up at the very back of the pack through the first corner. Eventually Tomac was able to make some passes as Malcolm Stewart went down, but starts huge in Supercross. So with their bad starts, Roxon and Tomac have to start charging through the field, and Roxon was on fire early in the race. He actually passed Tomac in the whoops, and then the next lap went around Justin Barsha, but Eli Tomac was doing everything he could to stay with Roxon as they were both charging towards the front as fast as possible. This is them getting into fourth and fifth, respectively. But then Roxon started jumping the whoops. You could tell he was starting to labor just a little bit, and Tomac took full advantage of that to continue blitzing the whoops and pass Roxon back at about the eight-minute mark of the race as he slid down the inside to get Roxon for fourth and set sail after the guys in front of him he would get Anderson he'd eventually get Osborne but that was after Osborne who had led most of the race eventually coughed up the lead as Webb who was jumping through the whoops very consistently would come down the inside and make the move on Zacco here on the 21st lap of the race trying to get away from Eli because Eli was coming and on the last lap of the race Tomac got this close to Webb but in the end it was Cooper Webb coming down to take his second win of 2020 but Tomac did extend his points lead now to 13 on Roxon. Now moving over to the 250 class and we have a titanic championship battle shaping up between Shane McElrath and Chase Sexton. Now if I pause the start here you can notice that Nichols and Sexton are just about even off the start. Now Sexton's going to pop a little bit of a wheelie and kill his drive here but I just want you to see how much of a drive these star Yamahas get down the start straight as Nichols to the outside and McElrath to the inside just kind of swarm around Sexton beat him to the corner and get the start on the number one machine which uh, eventually allowed the star boys to go one two and this main event but that was after Sexton who was running uh, fourth early in the race tipped over here in this corner got ran into by Pierce Brown so wanted to break this down a little bit better in slow motion as they are trying to get off of each other here bummer for Brown who just keeps getting caught up in these things on the first lap of the race but as you come into this corner you can see Sexton his front wheel does a little double tap it kind of taps twice on this uh, roller and Brown does the same thing behind him and he's almost going to go down as well but Sexton already sliding out in front of him Brown has nowhere to go runs into his lower back you can even see like hits him kind of first with the tire and then it looks like the foot peg kind of gets into him as well and then he's laying on uh, Sexton's neck brace so they're all just kind of tangled up but again just unfortunate for both of them in this situation so back out front it is McArath eventually catching and passing his teammate Nichols for the lead Nichols kind of just letting him have it here as they're trying to win this championship obviously for Yamaha Sexton further back would start making his drives through the field as he gets around Peters there goes down the inside of Swole to make this pass but it doesn't matter because Shane McArath takes his third win of the season and pulls the points chase to a tie at the top of the leaderboard with 140 points each for him and Sexton as Sexton would eventually come home fourth in this race so the championship battle is on but Sexton even after the race you could see getting ran over by Brown didn't feel good on the hip and the lower back region so kind of wince in there in pain but the star Yamaha boys all smiles out front with the one two and that was Salt Lake City two on to Salt Lake City three.